Mini RCs are better, or are they? There's a lot of reasons why buying a Mini RC over something bigger is totally worth it, but there's also some reasons why it's not. So today, let's talk about Mini RCs, some of the factors to consider when choosing one, and where to get started once you do. Now, why would you even want a Mini RC in the first place? Well, for one, they're really small, and they're the most portable RC type that you can get. Going to grandma's house? Throw it in your backpack. Going out of town to a hotel? Throw it in your suitcase. Because minis are so small and also lightweight, they're easy to carry, and they're easy to take pretty much anywhere you go. Their small size is also perfect for indoor use because they don't need as much space. The garage will work, a desk, your couch, whatever. You can get away with a lot more when the RC is mini. Even our local hobby shop has a few indoor mini courses for anyone to enjoy, which is only possible because the cars are mini and so are the courses. Indoor use also means that the weather can't stop you from RCing, which is normally a really big factor in playing with RC cars, but with a Mini, you bypass the weather. Another great part about having a Mini is how easy it is to create a track or an obstacle course or some sort of course for them. Like with Mini RC crawlers, any ordinary household objects can become your next challenge. Pile up some magazines, TV remotes, or coasters. I like to just crawl around at my desk, going up and over the mouse and the keyboard and whatever else is on there. It's a fun little challenge with a mini truck. Try doing that with a big truck, and it's just not as cool. Another huge benefit to the Mini RCs is that they just generally cost less and they're more affordable than getting a larger RC car, and I mean this in a few different ways. First, the upfront cost of getting a Mini RC is pretty cheap relatively. There's a lot of really good RCs in that $100 to about $150 mark, and they almost all include everything you need, including the battery and the battery charger, which is rare for larger vehicles. So with a Mini, there's not a lot of extra things you're gonna need up front. There are some really high-end Mini RCs that are not cheap to start with, like the Cayman Pro trucks that offer ultra performance, and there's also the Mini Z 4x4s that offer ultra realism, but in general, getting a Mini is less expensive than a larger standard size tent scale. Now, the second way Minis are more affordable is that it's a whole lot cheaper to make mistakes. The RC hobby is a live and learn experience and mistakes are bound to happen. So why not do it on the small scale? If you fry a motor, it's okay. Crack your body, no problem. These replacement parts are usually a fraction of the price to go buy and fix and repair on a Mini than they would be if you did the same thing on a much larger vehicle. Minis are also more affordable when it comes to upgrading them. There are tons of hop-ups and aftermarket accessories for Minis out there, especially for the Mini crawlers. These accessories can get pretty pricey, especially if you go overboard on them, but in general, they're gonna be less expensive than with a larger vehicle, and again, if you happen to make mistakes with these upgrades, it's a whole lot cheaper to do on a Mini. Now the last reason that Mini RC cars are totally worth it is because they have a really simple, easy battery management system to deal with. In most cases, Minis include small, low energy dense batteries that you connect to the included USB charger, which has no buttons or selections to make or worry about or get wrong, you just plug the battery into the charger and it does all the work for you. There are equally simple charging methods with larger cars like the Traxxas ID system and Spectrum has their smart system, but in general, dealing with the mini batteries is pretty simple. The one downside of the mini batteries and their chargers is that the charge times usually aren't the fastest. So this $25 EcoPower charger is what we usually recommend to people, which will work for most mini batteries and speed up those times. Another point about the batteries is that there is some risk in dealing with lithium batteries, regardless of how big your car is or how big or small the battery is. Lithium batteries are containers of energy, but with something like a mini battery, these things are so small capacity, so low energy dense, if there is a problem with it, it's not gonna be nearly as severe as a large battery would present to you if it were to have a problem. Not to mention that the mini batteries are way less expensive to replace place. This safety component is a good consideration to have if you're worried about lithium batteries or if you're just starting out in the hobby or if maybe this RC is for somebody younger. All right, all right, minis are amazing little RC cars. So then why would you ever not get one and choose something bigger? 
Well, for one, mini RCs are usually not waterproof, which is probably not a deal breaker for most people, but if you do want to drive outside, this is something to consider. Most larger cars, like 10 scale and up, already come with waterproof electronics right from the get-go, so you can get them wet without worry. This is not the case for a lot of mini RC cars, so if this is important to you, I'd double check and verify that it is first. Another important consideration about minis is driver abuse. Now, mini RC cars can definitely take their fair share of punishment, but when it comes to driver abuse, where somebody is just really hard on their stuff, a mini RC car is going to wear out and or break much sooner than a larger car counterpart. Minis have little gears. They've got little drive shafts and tiny little motors, and they can only take so much. So if you're hard on your equipment or the kids are rough with their toys, a larger RC will probably be the better investment in the long run. Now we've talked about minis being great indoors, they're great in tight spaces, and they're great for budgets. But what if none of that's a factor? Let's say you've got a big old backyard with open space, or maybe you're surrounded by big open fields. What if you have a huge paved driveway where you can put down some serious speed with an on-road car? Well then, a mini is probably not right for you. Open land, rough terrain, and lots of speed, this is the domain of larger RC cars, where their extra size and weight provide them extra control and stability. This is especially true for more performance, spirited type of driving and really rough terrain. There's nothing better suited than a big car with big tires and a big ground clearance. Now, with that being said, mini RC cars are definitely a very special category in the RC hobby, but they're definitely not right for all people and and they're not right for all situations. Considering how much money you have to spend, how big of a space do you have to store the RC and work on it, what environment will you be driving it in, indoor and outdoor, and especially how big is that environmental space that you have to work with are all really good things to consider when choosing mini or a large RC. Now for some suggestions on cars to be looking at, if I was getting into a new Mini, I would be looking at the Mini Z Collection as my first stop for an on-road specific platform. These little cars are fast, nimble, offered in two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and they've also got drifters. Prices on these cars depending on the chassis, but they range from about $100 to $200. For mini crawlers, you can't go wrong with the SCX24 at about $125. And this truck is super upgradable and probably has the biggest aftermarket accessory selection available of all the minis. Now for a little more money at $150, the FCX24 is worth looking at, and this includes high clearance portal axles, and it's another platform with a big aftermarket selection. Now for the same price, there's also the FCX24 Smasher Mini Monster Truck based off the same platform, and it's super cool. Now for off-road performance and racing, the two-wheel drive Losi Mini B Buggy takes the cake for being a proper mid-motor race car at about $160. The stadium truck version, the Mini T two-wheel drive, costs a little bit more at $230, but this one includes faster brushless electronics out of the box. Both of these are great two-wheel drive options, ideal for any small size backyard track. Now to go along with that are the four-wheel drive mini cars from Team Associated with the Reflex 14T Truggy and the Reflex 14B Buggy. Both of these include faster brushless electronics and they're about $200 and $230 respectively, but they're really awesome, fun four-wheel drive mini cars. Now for some ideas to be looking at on the larger 10 scale side, you can't go wrong with the good old Traxxas Slash. The base model Slash costs about $200 and it's very upgradable and it's pretty easy to find replacement parts. The same goes for the base model Bandit, Stampede, and Rustler variants. Another good off-road option are the 110 scale Arma Boost vehicles, which are around that $200 mark, and that includes the Granite, the Sentin, and the Vortex. These vehicles have the option of upgrading the drivetrain from two-wheel drive is how they come to four-wheel drive down the road, if you want to. Now for a 110 scale on-road car, my go-to would be the Phaser MK2 line. These are all four-wheel drive cars and they're offered in numerous different scale body options. These cars start at about $220 and they rip around pretty dang good, but they can be even faster if you want to upgrade their electronics later on. So what's the right answer here? 
Well, I don't think there is one. Buying a Mini or not really comes down to the person, their preferences, and the conditions they have to work with. Guys, go check out all the cars we talked about in our links down below. And for more RC videos, check these out.